What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Touring and Rain Reloaded channel. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that bell twice to be notified whenever I go live or upload a new video. So as you can see, we are back with another collab. It's been a while since the last time myself and Kid Gravity have collabed on my channel. I can't remember the last time we did or what we even discussed. It's been a well over maybe about well over two months since i think the last time we collabed about something abracadabra alakazam oh sorry i was trying to do some magic and it didn't work <laughs> right well if y'all didn't really get the hint or not see kid gravity's with well, set the uh name behind his name the handle we are going to be talking about this trailer that dropped for this new movie that's coming out next year called the American Society of Magical Negroes that has everybody on social media literally going crazy, like and not in a good way. I can be completely honest with you. I haven't really come across anybody who has watched this trailer who said that they enjoyed it. I've heard a lot of negative things about it, but based on the title kid gravity what did you expect before you even watched it what did you expect out of this because you said you saw the teaser and it got you mm -hmm. excited but then you saw the trailer itself and was like this ain't it well when i saw the original teaser trailer it was funny because david Allen smacked i guess he's the lead justice smith in the back of the head so he must have said something stupid so i was like okay and then i saw the title i was like wait a minute we're gonna get magic and black people Cause you know we're not representing harry potter like that i was like <laughs> okay black people doing some magic this is gonna be fire mm -hmm. and i already expected you know somebody was gonna be in there doing the stereotypical black stuff like i'm hungry i'm gonna conjure up some some food or something but okay i could get right. past that if we're gonna get a straight movie about black people hurling magic at each other and, and talking in tongues it'd be hilarious it'll get black christians pissed off i was all for it <laughs> then we saw the, the entire trailer and i said oh so it's one of those movies yeah um i'm going to save my real 4d ticket money i am not gonna go see this exactly so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna pull up the synopsis of what the movie is about so let me go ahead and share the screen right quick and y'all can see what the synopsis is and you can give your interpretation as well, uh, Kid Gravity. It says, a young man gets recruited into a secret society of magical black people who dedicate their lives to making white people's lives easier. So can we change this movie's title to the American Society of Magical <laughs> or the Magical Boule? Now, you know, that's not going to fit in their title. I know, but you know what's funny about this title? They're mm -hmm. letting Negroes go out like this. Mm -hmm. So they let that go. But when Nas wanted to label his album when he wanted to label it, I'm not going to say the word here. Yeah. They had a problem with it. Exactly. Exactly. And, the thing and is Hollywood also did have Boss, you know, Boss, that movie, that old school black exploitation movie, Boss N Word. Yeah. That was cool. And the thing is, you know, the thing about it is I am well aware of the magical Negro trope that's put out there because there's a lot of them floating out here right now who think that they are the magical Negro. We have particular names for them. And but <laughs> so it's like I'm sitting here thinking to myself, just reading the synopsis, who is this movie for? Like, who is the audience for this movie? Because I don't know. I, I, can, I think I figured it out. I think it's for this new wave of black people that are coming up, but it's also for this overly immersive non-black class that's coming in. Because we, like I said, we've been on Twitter X, whatever you want to call it, and we've been seeing like black culture being appropriated by everybody else, and people are giving credence to it, like K-pop. And now I'm watching white women and Spanish men doing mind stepping in sororities so mm -hmm. i think this is this is a way to take black culture and try to make it 
less extreme for the mainstream so they can do it I, who knows taylor swift might come out at the next award show with a with a alpha kappa alpha jacket on and we already know what's gonna happen with that but you know i'm not exactly. putting it out there i'm just saying it might happen exactly well like i said this is the synopsis right here for the movie and apparently what people were saying online were the people that was trying to defend it were saying that this is supposed to be a satirical type of movie sort of like the movie dear white people i'm sure you've probably seen that movie yes sir so i'm guessing they said it's supposed to be online in, in line with that but my thing is this and, and this is an issue that a lot of us had with dear white people it goes back to the thing is okay if you want to make satire fine but why is it at the end of the day the satire still go into the thing of we have to make pc feel comfortable like okay you did it before with dear white people we get it okay ha 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 but now you doing you're doing it again and now with the topic of magic especially when it comes to like you mentioned before like with harry potter there wasn't a lot of black characters in Harry Potter. Like you could probably count them on one hand and with the, on that one hand, you're probably counting on a one, maybe two fingers at best of how many black characters was in Harry Potter throughout that entire run. And Harry Potter had a long run with the books and the movies, mm -hmm. but then the chance, the opportunity, you know, you get, you know, uh, like wizardry or anything like that with a black character. This is what you decide to come up with you know uh and i think it's safe to tell people that um we didn't write this we did not as a matter of fact the director his name is kobe libby i'm guessing that's how you pronounce his last name mm -hmm. yeah yeah that wasn't us and the producers are not us so yeah yeah <laughs> so with that being said y'all we already went through the synopsis we went through you know we gave our little pre-take i guess you can say but now what we're going to do is we're going to go and look at the trailer itself now that now we probably gonna do some stopping goals in here kid gravity you already know how it goes if there's something that sticks out to you and i know it's a few things that did <laughs> then we will go ahead and stop and examine that. And by the way, if y'all are watching this, the link to the actual trailer will be pinned down in the comments. That way you have an opportunity to watch it before we get here. Because again, we're stopping and going. And I know some people might get annoyed by that, but that way, if you've already watched it, then you already know what to expect. I know you can feel their discomfort, Aaron. Did you see the first thing? What? Huh? Did you see the first thing? Oh, the, about with the PC woman? No, not that. Which part? Who 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 created the movie? You Focus? see that? No, on the bottom. A Comcast company. NBC strikes again. <laughs> Must be yeah. Nice. Yeah, for those of y'all who are unaware, NBC owns comcast no comcast owns Com NBC. oh my bad i, yeah, I don't know no i don't i don't know why i thought nbc NBC. wow yeah comcast owns nbc so not anymore apparently yeah now it's nbc universal and all that but you know but this is nbc being nbc again yeah so you know you and so comcast owns the peacock literally the peacock because that's their streaming platform mm -hmm. so very interesting First, maybe, maybe he'll show up on WWE TV. <laughs> I know you can feel their discomfort, Aaron. Watching you walk through a room full of white people was the most painful thing I've ever seen. Excuse me. Sorry. I don't want to take you to a job interview. There's a recruiting class starting right now, and we got to get you in it. Welcome to the American Society of Magical Negroes. So I don't really understand. It's easier to say. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? The shark. White people, when they feel uncomfortable. White people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. That's why we fight white discomfort every day. Because the happier they are, the safer we are. Oh my God. What? Yeah. 
Y'all heard it. The happier they are, the safer we are. We're not safer. The happy they are, the happier they are, the more bold they get. Likewise, when they're at their worst, they get more bold. That's why we say they take both sides of the argument. Exactly. Oh my God. It's already what? bad and we didn't get to a minute yet. Right. We only 50 sec 56 seconds into a two and a half minute trailer. And I like I'm not knocking the actor because they pick who they needed to pick, but you know this really wouldn't went over if they used a dark skinned brother for this. Yeah. But I think at least they knew better not to do that. Right. Oh my god, it's it's bad. It's already bad. And the, and the first thing you show to make white people uncomfortable is a cop. Mm-hmm. All right. The name is a little updating, maybe like magical black people, or I guess that doesn't have the same ring. Get ready. Oh wow. Your first client is a Jason Munt. His morale is far too low. Hey. Hey. Darn it. I was hoping there was a station right next to him. Oh, is this one spoken for? No. Yeah, it's actually fun and weirdly relaxing. It's like being a secret agent with none of the danger. Hey, I'm Lizzie. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. She's great. Yeah, she's cool. You kidding? Come on, man. She's smart and funny. And I know what you were doing going on about her. You're trying to set us up. No, no, no. That's not what I was doing. You cannot have a relationship with Lizzie now because if you don't put Jason first, everyone's magic will fail. What? What? <laughs> what? Why is it our job to save the world? Mm hmm. Save yourself. What? What is going on, bro? See, this is the I think this is the part that I think pissed a lot of black people off watching this because we see what what this is. Okay, we know what satire is. We we we've seen satirical pieces before, whether it's been something that's been written or something that's on screen. But something like this, something that we as black people deal with consistently, that has a rather negative, dark tone over and undertone to it. To turn it into something to try to make it comical, that's what kind of set a lot of people, especially a lot of black people, off based on comments that I read. Like, I don't think it, like I said, when I was looking through the comments of when the when I saw the trailer, it was not one black person that I saw that found this trailer to be appealing at all. Cause it's and I went through and like again I went through so many of them I didn't go through the whole thread but I went through the the regular comments and the quotes and on both sides of the spectrum it wasn't not one black person I came across that said that oh you know what I think I might actually pay money to go see this put this on Tubi already well no it's it's and it's Comcast so we got to put it on the Peacock put it on right. Peacock send send it to where house party is at yeah oh God what is but. Why is it his job to help this white guy bag this woman? Like he's supposed to be Hitch or something. That's what I was thinking of too. <laughs> we already got. We already had the movie Hitch back in two thousand five. Good movie. Except it wasn't way. a fat white guy. Right. But I, I see the shot they took at white people too. They're trying to say that even if you're an average looking white guy, you can't bag somebody like that white girl. Mm -hmm. But it. it, it uh, this movie is already it's already bad. And again, like I said, this is just the trailer. So they're not showing everything. So you can imagine what's going to be in it that we're not seeing. Where are the black chicks? I ain't seen not one. I only saw somebody's back in somebody's head. The only the only black chick that I saw so far in this is the person who looks like they're running the the society. Right. That's the only one. And she's a good actress, by the way. I've, I remember when she was on uh, when she was on Underground, when she played Harriet Tubman. I, I keep forgetting mm. the actress's name. Oh, Aisha Hines. Yes, Aisha Hines, and she's a very good actress. So no knock to her. Just like David Allen Greer is a, a very good actor, been around forever for a very mm -hmm. long time. So it's no again. This is no knock to the actors, you know. In this movie, it's just the narrative that it's pushing that we have an issue with. Right. Correct. I've always felt like it's my job to make white people feel comfortable, and here it literally is. 
but maybe it shouldn't be. I got a great plan to ask her out, but I'm gonna need your help. Do you think you could like work your magic? Hey, is he talking about me? Hey. Oh my wait, are you? Wait. He well, you asked him. Uh, yeah. I wanna put I wanna act like I didn't hear what he just said. The part where he said, Can you work your magic so she can like me? That part? Yeah. Okay, hold on. It should because that was the part I was about. That was the part I was about to say something on. I got a great plan to ask her out, but I'm gonna need your help. Do you think you could like work your magic? Hey, is he talking about me? Hey, oh my, wait, are you? So now she's insinuating something. How much you would have been in the movie that she's gonna insinuate that he a little? Yeah, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh my god, what is this? So my wife looked at the trailer with me and she was like, oh, this is a romance. I was like, that's not what they classified it as. But oh Lord. imagine, imagine black people having magical powers in this. And in, in, in this is the extent of right. where it goes. <laughs> not stopping white supremacy, not trying to level the playing field, at least in Harry Potter, you know, for the because we're going to keep bring, We got to keep bringing it up because that's like the best way to do it. At least with Harry Potter, when he and his friends, at least they had a mission and goal from the jump, and that was to take out Voldemort from the beginning to the end. And it had a whole nice story arc that went from one movie to the next to the next, like seamlessly, like, you know, like the book. It was, right. of course, some stuff left out. And it had an end resolve that was perfect. Like I always said, and people, some people might disagree with me or not, but I was a fan of the Harry Potter movies. I liked how it it was a very good story. It had a nice flow to it. It's crazy because that sto- that movie started in 01 when I was in middle school and was done the year I the year after I graduated from college. So you know how lengthy of a run that is. And for every movie to just get better and better and better as time goes on. That's the kind of story that I wish that we had. Because you know, there's always been this thing where they said that there's not enough original sci-fi movies that centered around black people and when we get the opportunity to possibly tiptoe into that and deal with you know not only sci-fi but with magic this is what you come up with yeah the uh the opportunity for us to not be a sidekick to, for us to be the leader or whatever and this is what you boil it down to is to aid to the comfort of PC. And if it doesn't work, you lose your powers. What the hell is going on here? This is what uh, they fought for months over. This is, do you, do you notice ever since this thing ended with the writer strike and the, uh, with the writer strike, the last few trailers they put out are not good mm-hmm. or the premises are dumb. Yeah. Yeah. This is what y'all fought for. This could have been a January release. You know, they like the you know, January is considered like the dump month. Mm-hmm. Although they're surprised they didn't do it in February. Although there are some movies that have come out in January, but it's a small sum that actually were good. Like, you know, they had Bad Boys for Life that came out in January, which shocked me considering that's more of a summer movie than anything, but it did well. You mm-hmm. know, uh that the Screen Five came out in the January and it did well. Megan came out in January and that did actually very well to the point where they greenlit a, a sequel for it. But uh, they could have put this in, in, in a January release with the rest of them, because I can honestly say with us having less than a minute left of this trailer to watch, I've already made up in my mind. I, uh, I'm i not. No, bueno. <laughs> no. And I usually I can be optimistic. Like, you know, whenever I do my movie reviews, I try to see the good in it before I really dump on it. If it, if it's worth doing, but I can already tell this is, this is not it. Hmm. And I can already tell too, because of the type of crowd is going for it. They're going to put a, a big push, a big marketing campaign behind it to try to make people go and see it though, especially the skeptics. Because we already know that they want a black audience to go and see this because that's who was really geared to well, That's who was supposed to be geared toward, but it's no get out. I'll put it like that. It's no get out. It's no us. It's no nope. Yeah. But let me go ahead and, you know, finish this out. But I-
Who was it? If you didn't let her go like I told you, if you interfere with her or your client, you could have your memory erased. You won't even remember she existed. Even though we might never see each other again, I need you to know that what we have. Okay. So this was the part right here that a lot of people was like, okay, now I'm completely tuned out. So your job and your mission is to basically be like the middleman to help this PC man get with this woman, this PC woman. But now you're developing feelings for her and getting in the way. And now you are running the risk of ruining the society or ruining yourself and losing your powers because you now develop feelings for this woman. <clears throat> I hope I'm not reading too deep into this. Well, you can't have a what do you call it. You can't have a movie like this without a three-way can't do that this is twilight this is a new twilight <laughs> wow you know I, didn't, I don't know why i didn't even think of that that's a i think that's a good way to put it except without the sparkles yeah i'm trying to find the picture of this now what who, who's this chick i'm trying to find out where, where where her family's from i don't know i don't know let me see then no, Michaela Watkins was that old chick that came in. Might be this chick, Ann Lee Bogan. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. She must be new on the scene, so we'll see. What if we find out she's like Middle Eastern or something? Right. It's real. I'm curious to see how you're going to make it out of all this. <laughs> Yeah. So, what are we saying? PG-13? I just realized I said this film is not rated. It probably is going to fall into PG-13. Most likely. More than likely. I can see it. <laughs> Magical Negroes. Hey, great. Now, white people get to say Negroes all over. I saw. I heard it in a movie trailer. It's it in the title. Trailer. You know what? You know when they're going to run it? You know when they make the when they make their reviews about it? They're going to, you know, this is my know. review for American Society of America, and they're going to emphasize Negroes. Negroes. Because right. you know how, like, you know, how, like a lot of them be saying the blacks, you know. Yeah, there's going to be another <laughs> they thing they're going to try to hit us with. Are you, why, why are you talking like one of the magical Negroes? Huh? <laughs> This is, in the words of Randy Jackson from American Idol, this is a no for me, dog. Yes, sir. So what I'm going to do after we get off is I'm going to go into my profile and go into settings, and I'm going to mute that. American Society of Magical Negroes. I'm going to mute it. Right. I don't right. want to hear none of this. All right. So one last thing I want to go over, um, like I was telling you, that it was an article. Now, this isn't the only article, but it's one of several that I saw when I typed the title into Google that had this same narrative because this is actually coming from a website called bounding into comics.com and it was posted December 16th. So of course it was a couple days ago, which was right around the time the trailer dropped online. And of course, like I said, a lot of people online was not feeling this trailer at all. At least from the black people that I saw reading the comments were not liking this trailer whatsoever. And this article right here is now going to try to tell it from the perspective <laughs> of PC. It says upcoming the American Society of, um, of Magical Negroes movie shamelessly describes white people as the most dangerous animal on the planet. Now, if you were, I'm not sure if you recall KG, but uh, they just Netflix just put this movie out called Leave the World Behind. And it got a lot of pushback because of a line that was given by one of the uh, black characters in the movie, because um, I think it's only two of them in there, because I haven't watched it yet. People have been asking me, am I going to watch it? I don't know yet. Um, I know Mahershala Ali is one of them, and it's another act, and then I think he pl she plays his daughter. And she had put a, she had said a line in there about like um, white people and not to trust them and everything like that, and they completely lost their shit. Like, they lost their minds mm -hmm. behind that one line, and now they're trying to say, oh, you need to boycott the movie. I said, all you did is push more people to go ahead and watch the movie. And the thing is, the movie wasn't even centered around that one damn line from what I heard. It was just that one line pissed you off, made you mad. Now I'm seeing the same thing is probably going to play out here because when Dear White People came out, 
they kind of had the same sentiment until they watched it and realized, okay, it's not that bad. It's not what we thought it was. It's just the title pissed us off. Yeah, that's usually how it is. And it was a book, by the way, but of course they didn't read the book beforehand. <laughs> right. So let's go ahead and see what this is talking about here. Making his directorial debut, comedian Kobe Libby is at the helm of the upcoming satirical film starring Justice Smith, who starred in Detective Pikachu, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, and fellow comedian David Allen Greer, Blank Man, and Clifford the Big Red Dog, just to name a few. Per the official synopsis, the American Society of Magical Negroes is a fresh satirical comedy about a young man whose name is Aaron, who is recruited into a secret society of magical black people who dedicate their lives to a cause of utmost importance, making white people's lives easier. So what do you think about that part, even though we already went over the synopsis earlier? <laughs> it's, it's, it's still bait and switch again like i said yeah okay we get it it's satirical but the thing is did you have to make it where it's making their lives comfortable how were their lives not comfortable so i'm trying to figure out they, you know what this should have been called the american society of the safe negro because that's basically what it's playing out to be let me just you know let me tiptoe around them and not piss them off and maybe i can get a few crumbs that's what it's playing out to me when I look at the trailer and the synopsis. Hmm. I don't get. Like I, I said, I'm, like, I like I said, like I said, this movie is clearly not for us. The fact that we're trying to question and figure this out like this, and, it, and it's like taking for us to for for it to hammer home for us. Maybe it's just not for us. I know it's not for me. It's I've already declared that before we even before I even press record on this video. I'm still trying to figure out what they're trying to go for. Cause they're saying this is a comedy. Did we laugh one time? Nope. I mean, okay, the teaser trailer. Okay. That was funny. We didn't expect them to smack that dude upside the head. Okay, we laughed, but we're looking at the full trailer now. You didn't add that into it. And there was nothing in there that was funny. Like even right. his his joke, he's like, well, you could call them magical black people. I'm like, that's not even funny exactly and i don't like forced funny i like it to be organic right so let's see it says the trailer introduces us to smith's character who appears to be a new recruit of the american society of magical negroes being trained by greer's character the specific line of dialogue labeling white people as dangerous animals is uttered by greer halfway through the trailer as his character prepares to explain what the mission of this magical society is revealing that their main goal is to keep white people happy with their discomfort levels being measured in white tears <laughs> oh god so this is another social media movie basically okay yeah what's the most dangerous animal on the planet he rhetorically asks right after smith's character replies with shark he is immediately corrected by greer who says white people when they feel uncomfortable how do you white know he was being rhetorical when he first said it good point Mm -hmm. white people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of a lot of bad stuff for us he continued that's why we fight white discomfort every day because the happier they are the safer we are and we already outlined earlier that's not true. that's definitely not the case Could there be. better be a you know what there better be a serious plot twist to this movie <laughs> it better be it gotta be in an interview with Black Entertainment Television, or BET, Libby provided more details about his motivation to make the film like the American Society of Magical Negroes, revealing that he was not a fan of these particular type of stories, yet you made it. Hmm. it. It all sort of starts with the Magical Negro trope the director pre prefaced. I'm sure you're familiar with it, but just to define it in my own terms, I think of the Magical Negro as a kind of stock Black character, a Black best friend character who was only focused on helping the white hero. Okay, now, like I said, that's pretty much the definition of it. You know, like how they always, like PC like to say, I have a black best friend, or mm -hmm. I have a spouse or whatever, and when usually you see them out and about, like, you know, like if it's a group or a cluster of them, you see the one, that's like the to or the token is another word to describe it. <laughs> it says, he went on 
they don't really have an inner life and they don't have their own things going on. They just relentlessly focus on helping this white character grow in most cases. And I always thought that was so funny. I guess to you, you um, <laughs> is this for whatever reason, the idea that there's a white writer who pictures the thing we do in the morning is getting up and trying to help them. I found it so absurd and incorrect and funny that I wanted to blow it out and criticize it, but also use it as a way to talk about other stuff. Libby further explain what it's like to grow up as a black person in this culture and some of the wild and fantastical things we have to do to survive. To me, that's the origin story of the film. What is wild and fantastical? What, 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 what is that? You mean just living our lives? That's wild and fantastical. I love it's, how they have this glorified view of what black society is and what black life is. And they don't never come talk to us. Mm-hmm. Because it ain't it's not fantastical. These new not, blacks, boy. Not in the least bit. I'm just saying. I swear these nouveau blacks, man, they 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 go, man. Okay, okay. Well, oh, pay attention to this part right here. Mm -hmm. It says Libby would go on to reveal that he would not. He was not concerned about audiences not understanding the message he's trying to convey with the American Society of Magical Negroes, especially for a film with such a title. Not particularly because it's one of those things that, like, even if you don't know the term, you know, he told BET. It's Spike Lee's term. He's the one who coined it. You know that black character that's just there to be nebulously black in the background. He no, elaborated. Huh? We don't even use that term outside like that. Right. So who's going to get it? And he that, likely did that, that in 01. Most of y'all were not born yet, or you were youngins. And that right there just basically answered my question of who was this movie for. Oh my god. So so it's Gen Z's movie. They're basically. trying to make Negroes not look as as aggressive as they think X and Y were are. Hmm. Boy, if they don't go sit that man, they're gonna <laughs> wake up calls, boy. They look now. This is very interesting. He elaborated, they're not really a person and we all can picture it beyond the movie. We all know what it's like to feel pushed to the side and have somebody else pushed to the front. As of writing, the official trailer shared to Focus Features YouTube channel has been given a two point, uh, well, basically 2,700 plus thumbs up and disliked over a whopping 25,000 times with 2.2 million views and counting. Yeah. That thing got mass disliked. And based on the trailer and looking at it, I can see why. I love how you and just, I love how this person just told everybody you're not going to get the message. So why am I going? I need <laughs> this explained to me. If I don't know the message of the movie, why am I going? Now, if it's like a movie where it's like a mystery, okay, I can understand that. But you're you're crafting this as a comedy. What is what are you trying to say? I don't know. I don't expect people to get it. What then? Why am I wasting my money? Exactly. So I'm gonna go pay for this ticket. Go sit there for whatever length of time it is, and then come out and be like, "What the hell was that about?" No. <laughs> The article goes on to say, to the surprise of absolutely no one, the trailer for the American Society of Magical Negroes has been overwhelmingly disliked by viewers who have severely criticized the film's premise, calling out its lack of tact and accused it of promoting racial division. I already know when I hear that term racial division, I already know from what standpoint that's coming from, because we know who likes to say that the most. Uh, this mm -hmm. is quoted from somebody who says this movie should be nicknamed the American Society of Magical Racism. Imagine trying to buy a ticket for this. Man, this is going to bomb hard. Read a comment by a YouTube user at Blades of War. Now, like I said, how PC is going to feel about this movie is going to be vastly different from how black people feel about it. Correct. We're not we're we're not lined up in sync with how we feel about this movie at all. Because like this person who wrote this comment, that was not a black person that said that. That was definitely PC who said that. Because you can always you can always just tell by the by the wording that that's a PC person that wrote that. Yeah, I'm, right now I'm looking to try to see if I can find out how much they spent making this movie, and I can't really find it. Yeah, they may not have it up yet. 
Um, and here's some more comments. Uh, someone else it says, "Nice to see many of us come together to express how disappointing and terrible just the concept of this is, and how baffling it is that it was ever made." Uh, someone else said, "This is an embarrassment for everyone involved." Adding, "How do you even explain to someone that you agreed to be in this? Make it screen it just wow." Someone says, making a mockery of the trailer as a whole, still waiting on a magical black person to show up and comfort me from watching this trailer. Uh, <laughs> someone, like I said, these are PC people leaving these comments, by the way. Mm -hmm. This is not, not this is not one black person that's saying any of this, but we're going to go through it. This is user James Scott 7215 proposed. My theory about this movie is that it was originally a satire comedy, but someone in the writer's rooms got confused. Someone said, this is absolutely insane. I can't believe so many people thought this was a good idea. That's the thing. I, K, KG, before before this came out, when, when you saw, like, did you, like, oh, I know you said you saw the teaser. When did you see the teaser? The day it came out, November 15th. See, I didn't even know it was, I didn't even know it was a teaser for this movie. I didn't even yeah, know that this movie, I didn't even know this movie was a thing until this trailer dropped a couple days ago. Yeah, because uh, when I saw the trailer, I was just scrolling through X and I saw the trailer. I was like, David Allen Gray is in a movie. And then I saw the title. I was like, okay, what is this? And the part where they came in through that picture, that's the part you saw. And then he, he like the guy said something like, I don't remember what he said, but he smacked him upside the head. I was like, uh-oh. So this might be like a teacher mentor thing. And you got magic involved and black folks, this might be fire. And then now we get the full trailer a month later and, and look. Right. We got snowed. <laughs> Someone else said, I love the part where Nick Fury shows up and says, Black Girl Magic mocked another user, making allusion to a real line of dialogue uttered in Disney's abysmal box office flop, The Marvels. Someone said, A classic story of wonder, romance, and racial division simply declared uh, Polsky or Ogorka, including a happy emoji to really hammer the point home. So those are all the comments that they pulled. And like I said, these were all comments from PC people. So what I'm saying is how they feel about the movie is vastly different than how we feel. And I'm willing to guarantee that the people who mass disliked the trailer on their YouTube channel was mainly them. Because all the grievances I saw from black people was on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. That's where I saw mostly black people going crazy about it. But of course, you know, they have to make sure to put to the forefront how PC felt about it because apparently only how they feel about it mattered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, baby. Um, Heather. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, honey. Would you like to go see this um, Magical Negroes movie? Um, <laughs> I, I guess. Is it going to be a whole bunch of black people in it? He's like, no, I, I looked at the trailer. There's a lot of white people in it. And apparently it's going to be about black people making us feel safe. I, I guess we could do this for a date night. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to pick you, you up. I'm going to pick you up after work about six o'clock, right? You get off at six, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what's so interesting that you said that is that, again, in the trailer, the only thing that PC picked out about it that they hated was the part where david allen greer's character said what he said about how white people are very dangerous mm -hmm. but they completely omit the part where the movie is literally catering to their comfort oh yeah at least what we saw in the trailer that's what it's displaying i still don't understand why he's saving a white guy for, who doesn't know how to talk to a female and that's what you're using your powers for mm-hmm okay, okay. There's so many there's so many other ways that this could have gone that would have worked. Oh my and god, like it was said, so funny. That's and like I said, and like I was saying, like this is the type of movie, like, well, not this movie, but when people when black people said we wanted to see like a movie that involved magic and stuff like that, it was a lot of black people again going back to Harry Potter. They was expecting something like that, you know, uh along those lines. Not this this is not what black people were saying that we wanted which is why i support those who are independent filmmakers who do create you know stories that their own narratives and their own stories that are you know positive and don't play into the stereotype because this thing this thing is hitting so many stereotypes it's not even funny oh yeah but yeah i think it's safe to say in closing that this is one movie I will be gladly skipping. 
until it comes on like streaming and then we can just watch not it. even then wow so y'all heard it heard it first folks there will be no touring movie review on just American like Sky I told Magical people, just Media. like I told people, I wasn't watching Aquaman two. If Amber Turd heard was in it, I'm not going to watch this one either. Will you watch Aquaman? <laughs> well, that was a sight to see. You know, <laughs> that was back in August. That now that's something different. <laughs> well, I think this you got it. You can use Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> we, we we need Siskel and Ebert for this. I, I would love to hear them try to say, "Are we allowed to say this word, Negroes?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um in you, got closing, anything, you got anything yeah um yeah nah bro nah bro this is something i expect daily wire to try to pull off but hey shout out to nbc shout out to nbc i'm sure there's probably gonna be a bill cosby reference somewhere in that movie yeah, I, I, well, so I I'll wait till somebody I watches it and points. I won't know. That's it. The only th- only thing I will watch as it pertains to this movie is if I'm watching somebody's review on it. Somebody that like somebody who I trust who does movie reviews, and mm-hmm. I would have to watch it from the. I I would probably how I, the way this thing is framed. I would have to watch a couple of black movie reviewers. And maybe a couple of PC ones, because I want to compare and contrast how they review, how they perceive this movie. That's that. That's how. Because I'm curious, will it be differences? I'm sure it will be. Or how many commonalities will there be? Or will there be? Or will they meet somewhere in the middle right. with this? That's that's how. That's as far as it's going to go for me. But you know, as far as it's going to watch it, I wouldn't even watch this for free. What if they gave you the popcorn for free? I can get my own damn popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you gotta get the protein popcorn, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this is this is again, this is what they fought for on the picket line. They had this in the chamber ready to release. After they at the ink wasn't even dry yet, they pulled out their teaser trailer. The only other insult that this movie could have did as far as release is they released it in February. Yeah. Nah, now nah, you know. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, imagine if they did do that during Black History Month. Mm. But you know, we now we wait for Captain America New World Order's first trailer, and I'm pretty sure they're gonna somehow slip the N word in there somewhere. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know they ended out. up pushing that movie back, so we might yeah. have to wait a little longer for that trailer to come out. Yeah, but yeah. You know, yeah yeah american society now we good <laughs> right exactly and uh shout out to everybody that came through and is watching this right now uh again i know it, it was that was very nauseating it was nauseating for me too and i'm sure kg as well like that's that was actually my first time watching the trailer in its entirety like, i know you said you guys saw it but you know uh like that's yeah, yeah. that's definitely not going to be for me it, it yeah. didn't change it didn't change the second time around mm-hmm no opinions changed <laughs> but anyway y'all thanks for coming through shout out to everybody that is here shout out to all the new subscribers shout out to people that's on patreon uh who follow me on in the discord on twitter and instagram and all of that good stuff make sure y'all go ahead and subscribe to kid gravity's youtube channel i will leave the link to his channel also in the description so you can go and subscribe if you haven't done so already be safe and be one